Well, happy Sabbath Sunday, everybody. My name is Jared Bayless. I'm the worship pastor here. We wanted to do something just a little bit different. One year ago, believe it or not, we sat up here, the three of us, on this stage, and we welcomed Buzz and Tara Hannon into our church family, and we got to just sim simply ask them questions and ask them uh, who they were and got to do a kind of a Q&A. Well, it has been a year, which is crazy, and so we thought, let's recreate this. And so we decided to do something uh, like another Q&A, but I'm doing the queuing. And so we're going to do a, a kind of a recap of, uh, of their last year. And so we thought this would be fun, have them up here, sort of informal. We don't have a crowd. You're not here. Or you, for all you know, there's nobody here. Um, so anyway, we thought we would just uh, get started and do some of this. And maybe you guys can hear from their hearts what they've learned and what they're learning moving forward. And so let's just get started. And let's see. I don't know who, which one of you guys want to take this one, or you can both do it. Actually, you should both do this because All right. it's one or two sentences. In one or two sentences, um, sum up this last year. How crazy was it? And if it needs to be more sentences, that's fine. <laughs> should we rock, paper, scissors, or, or why don't you just go ladies first? first? Ladies first. There you Chivalry's go. There you go. <laughs> ladies first. Uh, so summing up the year. Yes. The, the, the whole living here year it's or your the answer, church but... experience? Okay. It's my answer. And I will simply say that the Lord sustains you in the places that he calls you. Wow. That was one, Dang, that one was good. sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can follow that in one sentence, but I guess I feel the same. You know, like the last year has been, I want to say like mixed, it just, but only in the sense that you see God unfolding things you didn't anticipate in advance. We felt really called, really supported, really affirmed in being here. It's been a great, it's been a great year. We have felt in the center of God's will, and that's an awesome place to be. So there have been highs and lows, way more highs than lows. But man, God has sustained us. He's prepared a way for us here, and we're just so blessed. So awesome. there you go. A couple All sentences right. for you. Let's talk more about those highs. Um, so let's talk about like memories, some some of those uh, best times that you remember for, let's go each one of you, maybe if you want to do one or two or, or if they're shorter, but what are some things that in this last year that you'll look fondly or you do look fondly back on that you loved and that, um, and I'm sure they're a little bit different or maybe there's some same. There's so many highlights. I don't know that I can no. do this one in one sentence. So. No, that, that's off the table. You don't, these are multiple uh, sentences. But definitely all the women's events um, redeeming the time at Christmas, just seeing yeah. all the ladies come out and their Christmas fancy stuff and just getting to do worship with them and ministry with them. It, that was beautiful, beautiful time, beautiful decor that um, the other staff put together, doing the Bloom event, which just women are my heartbeat. I loved just having them come out um, bring friends, bring even people from like other places, other cities, even a few other churches to just kind of enjoy all the things that women love in an afternoon, um, which is like kind of generic to say that. We, we have a, a wide variety of things we love, but teapots and bloom bars and just worshiping together. I love to teach, so just having the honor of getting to do that for them a message that felt specific and timely about them blooming in leadership. And then just like seeing that happen through the rest of the year and having so many different women come up with like new ideas and new projects and things that they initiated at work or um, just like new small groups that they started. That was just like incredible. Um, on the personal side, I really enjoyed all four of our boys played baseball. So that was a grueling schedule because <laughs> there was so much. It's like rain. a lot of rainouts, a lot of rainouts. <laughs> but for sure. also, I don't know, just like seeing them grow in their strength and their like workmanship and their team ethics and all of that. Like I was really, really proud of them because baseball is not my strength. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I mean, a couple for me. I don't even know how you can slim it down. Uh, we did uh, an outreach project, load in uh, spring break food bags, and we got to pitch in with the boys and with you with our small group serving together. I really loved that. It was just fun to, I don't know, come up with a system, 10 on a pallet and into the truck and just really feel like we're making an impact in the community and partnering with the church family and doing that. That's one thing we loved about Element Church one year ago was that we were a church that strove to 
put this idea of Christ's love into practice and, and practically reach our city and love on them without strings. And so to be a part of those things has been awesome. So whether it was Element Gives Back at New Year's Eve or, or excuse me, Christmas Eve or packing those food bags or the gas giveaways, like those things have been a, have been a real highlight for me, for sure. And I can't skip, I'm sorry, I got to add this back in. But at that Bloom event, um, I met this lady in the crowd who literally, this is the power of the pink jumpsuit, which is like the dumbest story, you guys, but I bought that for the Bloom event. And she sought me out because of that dumb outfit. And then I noticed about her that she had this Norwegian accent and I used to live in Norway. And so it was this crazy cool connection. We just started speaking in Norwegian to each other, had this whole conversation. Um, she was unchurched. She'd never been to church before. It was like her first time, and it just felt like the Lord had totally orchestrated that moment, inspired by a dumb pink jumpsuit. So, <laughs> can I get you to say I wore a pink jumpsuit in Norwegian for us? <laughs> Ooh, I don't know if I it's know. Like jumpsuit, jumpsuit is like yeah, that's like okay. that's a deep cut. Ooh, um, that's that's challenging. Men jag kan se många aldriga tinger, men det är det är vanskeligt för mig. No, I know. <laughs> no, I hear you there. He gets it. Hopefully you're watching a random Norwegian lady and can fact check I this. I said it is difficult for me to say that in Norwegian. And he said, oh, I know. So I, know I know it. He did I know, know the dinga or whatever you said. No, I, know. I, I mean, I know what you said. And but. I have to also say that I've loved, 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 loved getting to know the teenagers. I cannot leave that out because two of our kids are in fusion. And so just like getting to hang out with them and getting to know them better getting to speak for them twice and just like hear their hearts. I, I often kind of tease my little boys that I think I'm better with teenagers than I am with little kids because they always hear me like cracking dumb jokes and like just taking forever when I put the big boys to bed. And they're like, why do you have so much fun with them? And I don't know, I just feel like we're in this really sweet spot with our teenagers. And so that's been really special for me to get to know their friends and their community and hopefully just be like a source of strength and and maybe, you know, a shred of wisdom <laughs> for yeah. all those teens. I think for me it's similar. We got to go to the Desperation Youth Conference with our Fusion Student Ministry ostensibly as sponsors, but really I felt like I was just riding the wave of enjoying spending time with the next generation as they're brought up in faith. And so I loved it. It didn't feel like work to me. It felt like a lot of fun. And so I'm grateful for that. I'll look back at that. I think fondly for my whole life. And then I agree with you. Like uh, you talked about meeting that Norwegian uh, person who'd been to church for the first time. And I've had so many conversations with you guys who are either engaging Jesus for the first time or involved in church life for the first time or maybe coming back for the first time after COVID. And that has been such a highlight for me is just to see that God is working here in the city and using our church to be a part of that. Man, that never gets old at all. And so if you are one of those people that has said yes to Jesus in the past year or maybe engaged church for the first time, I would love to meet you if I haven't yet. It always puts a smile on my face. And so everybody I've met at small groups or Christian Basics or here on Sunday morning, like, man, the relationship side has been a huge gift to me. So thank you for being a big part of my last year's highlights. Okay, next question. I'm sorry, I'm not dismissing that. Like, yeah, that's great. Uh, no, I mean, next question. Um, <laughs> um, you obviously are both are following Jesus, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Um, but as you follow Jesus, as we all do, we grow. And so what have you guys learned in the last year about following Jesus as it applies to this new season that you just stepped into? And what is the new things that you have learned um, in a new journey? That's a big one. It's maybe the best one, though. Um, just simply knowing that he has his people everywhere. You see vibrancy in every city, in every place that you visit, and every time he asks you to move and to do something brave and bold and new, I feel like we're in this sort of beautiful chess game that sometimes he just needs to strategically move a few pieces to optimize what he's doing in the world. Um, but we have to bravely say yes to the move. He won't just force our hand. Um, but I do think that it optimizes the game when we are willing to do something different um, and just flow with his strategy because he sees the next chapter. He sees the next phase. He sees the next win. 
And so, yeah, just getting to see that like, a lot of us converged on Cheyenne at once, and yet he also had people planted here for generations that were ready um, and already doing his work. And so just being a part of that, that sort of giant scope that the Lord always sees, like down in, in the future of what he needs for people to do to be effective. So kind of coined this saying over the last year, I feel like you've either lived in Cheyenne for four weeks or four generations. And so being we're on the four week side, uh, it's been fun to meet the other transplants to Cheyenne. Like Tara says, we do feel like God has something brewing and building for us. And then yet that legacy of faithfulness that's in this place has been super fun to experience. Uh, for me, right before we left California, there was a, there was a guy who I didn't even know that well. Uh, his daughter was in a youth group, and we came and just bumped into each other as we picked up our kids that Wednesday, and he's talking to me about our move, and he's like, man, it's the most beautiful calling when Jesus says, come and shepherd my sheep. He's like, it's the very best thing, and I've really treasured that. It's the best thing to shepherd Christ's sheep. I'm sorry I'm getting emotional. Maybe it's just all the fog that Tim put in here. Who, who knows? I just love to blame other people. And as I've done that, or tried to do that, I realized kind of it's not even anything new necessarily about following Jesus, but how important that following actually is, that the main thing is the main thing. Intimacy and union with Christ has to be at the center. Like daily prayer, daily repentance, daily Bible reading, that stuff matters. Like my ideas or my teaching technique or any of the strategy, all that stuff that you kind of get bogged into as you do the business of pastoring sometimes, it doesn't matter compared to just pursuing our Savior. And so I've tried to do that as well as I can. I need to do that increasingly well. I mean, that's an encouragement for you. Whatever God's called you to do, that the pursuit of Christ at the center of that, like that's the main thing. So for me, I guess, summing that up, back to basics is what he's teaching me. Just shepherd my sheep, hear my voice, follow in it. It's been beautiful. That was great. I feel like we should have done that later here, but that's okay. Um, we'll, <laughs> we'll try not to let good. you down no, with these but, last couple. No, 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 no. Um, so let's do one more look back question. Um, so what is the most surprising thing, whether it can be Element Church or being here in Wyoming, that, I mean, you come to a new place, you're going to have surprises. There's just, like, you can't help it. So what is the things that surprised you most, whether church-wise or both here in Wyoming? And then we'll talk future about what you're excited about in the future, and then we'll wrap this up. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go first this time, I guess. I, I'm not a very, like, surprised person. Like, I'm pretty steady, slow and steady wins the race, I guess, by personality. I don't really enjoy pranks or, like, surprises in my office or anything like this. <laughs> and I think we did a pretty good job at, like, envisioning our own future. But some things that really have blessed me about our church in specific is how encouraging our church body is. I mean, I just feel like every single Sunday, everybody's telling me, like, we love you. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for what you do. And, like, I really <laughs> need to hear that. And I'm so grateful that that's been the message of the church is just that you love serving the Lord. You love being a part of this church community. And you're grateful to have me be a part. Like, that's been a huge wind in my sails. So I'm very thankful for that. I don't want to say that's a surprise that this was an encouraging church. But um, that's been a huge, huge, huge blessing. I feel like Cheyenne in general is a, is a friendlier town than I thought maybe that it would be. Maybe coming from the Bay Area, we just got so like beaten down with like people being so angry at you in Target for seven years. Uh, it's nice to just feel like you can have a conversation in a restaurant, have a conversation in your neighborhood, and everybody is happy to engage that. We've loved that about the pace of life here. Uh, to steal a little bit of my thunder, like I hope in the next season to uh, pursue relationship beyond just a, a friendly conversation and really drive intimacy with Christ and intimacy into our relationships together too. So I guess the encouraging and friendly nature of the town has been a surprise, but really a blessing. I guess I would say it that way. What about you? Well, I feel like you stole my answer. That's, so that's why I wanted to go I first. <laughs> I was like, oh, I see what you're doing. <laughs> but I do feel like the Lord gave us some um, just strategic people at specific times that they probably didn't even know what they were intentionally doing for us, but just a note, a card in the mail, or even just something specific as they sought us out in the lobby um, to really put wind in our sails. And it felt very generous and just very soul specific to what we needed to hear to feel just esteemed and valued and like we're on the right track. And so thank you guys so, so much for 
just the generous words that you've gifted us yeah. all year. I feel like Absolutely. words are our love language. It's like how we fell in love. <laughs> On a moreover, we fell in love. <laughs> uh, That's true. I'm a nerd. Ask Tara about that in specific <laughs> later. But I also love words. And so thank you. The gift of words has been huge for us. Um, I think we've been really surprised by the sky. <laughs> the sky of Wyoming has just felt larger and we're like, is this like a weird fisheye effect or like, is it because there's not as many buildings as we were used to because we were kind of like choked down more in like yeah. city life. But I think I felt like, I felt surprised that I did not miss the rhythm of my former season like I thought I would. And I, I dearly miss all my precious people in California and Oklahoma, and you know who you are. But my way of life just sort of unfurled here, and I got physically healthier. That was probably the greatest gift. And that's gonna make me cry, because we were definitely on some health journeys that um, miraculously healed when we came here. And so if that's not a stamp of approval, <laughs> of you being in the right place and following the Lord at the right time. Um, that's been just very encouraging, very affirming, making me just feel like the Lord is so close and he just sees exactly where you need to be and he'll redeem things that you weren't even really asking for. Yeah, I'd say everybody should move to Wyoming. <laughs> except everybody who already lives here is like, please don't say that. We like it how it is. So <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so what's, okay, so what's something that you guys are most looking forward to in the next year, or it could be more than a year, but what, let's do a future thing. What's, we've talked looking back, but let's talk looking forward. You know, one of the scripture verses that is said about Samuel and then about Jesus is that they grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. And I look forward to seeing that happen for my sons here. You know, as much as we've received encouragement, like to see everybody love our family has been awesome. And so just to continue to watch them grow and graduate, and that's making me sad thinking about the future of our, of our boys. But I'm looking forward to continuing to raise our sons. Like it's, it's the best thing that we do really. So I'm looking forward to that. And then I'm also looking forward to our church family increasing in wisdom, stature, favor with God and others. This fall, my prayer for us is that we will increase in our intimacy with Christ and in our union with him. And so we have some exciting things planned for that, whether it's through our small group system, our devotional reader that we have for the John series, some uh, church kickoff picnics, just stuff that we're going to do to try to drive that relationship beyond the now I know your name and into now I know your life and I love you as a brother and sister in Christ. And so I think after a year, like that's happening, that's blossoming and that's becoming ever more so. So I look forward to harvesting those seeds that we've laid uh, in a really powerful way over the past year. I mean, there's a lot to look forward to. I mean, it's hard to narrow it down, but like that's always on the top of my head. Are my sons doing well? And then is our church growing in their passion for Jesus Christ? Like that would make me just the happiest camper. Is that a thing we can say? I don't sure. know. <laughs> we haven't even gone camping yet. We haven't. That's I look forward to that. And then uh, we're probably, don't tell yeah. anybody, going to try to take a family vacation to Yellowstone in summer 2024. And so I look forward to that for sure because bison are everything to buzz. <laughs> it's true, especially when I eat them. They taste so delicious. <laughs> oh, sad. Furry bison. Um, furry cows. I am a gardener. You guys know that. That's a thing that I was passionate about in California and I thought maybe would disappear here. And I feel like a lot of people were trying to tell me horror stories, like nothing was ever gonna grow. And I'm like, no, I will prevail. <laughs> and our flower garden has looked great all year. But I felt like it taught me a lot of lessons about pivoting um, into like, well, what does thrive? Then let's get to know what that is and let's invest there. And so just like learning the culture of a place, I feel like that's a thing that we're really trying to do here is to learn the people, to learn their style, to learn their culture, um, and not just the plants, but metaphorically, what will make people thrive and grow here. Um, and I was just doing this study on roots and how like, if your roots are deep enough, they can even crack through rock like bedrock, and that just feels insane to me. Like this flimsy little root can crack through something that is just so invincible. 
Um, and I encouraged the youth with that earlier this year. And so just like seeing, I think, my children do that, that's my prayer, as Buzz said, that their roots would scrabble down so deep that they are invincible to what the world wants to throw at them. Um, they've never been in a public school before, but they're there now, and they really have to stand up for their faith. They have to be strong. They have to be a bright light. They have to shine. They have to speak. They have to lead, um, and being deeply rooted can do that, and I think that this place that Cheyenne and the deep, long winters that everyone was trying to terrify me with, and it was like, we survived it, it was fine. Like we hunkered down, we were tight as a family, and that's how we'll continue to prevail into this future season. I'm very excited to continue to just shepherd the women and see how they um, can continue to grow in their leadership and all of their creativity, the projects that you guys have, the things that you're dreaming of. I just want to breathe life over that. Um, just encourage you, pray for you, and just see all of those things come to fruition, like this sort of beautiful blossoming of a garden that people didn't think could survive, but it will, and we're gonna do it together. So I'm super excited to just continue to see women step into their places um, of excellence. And I feel really honored because I've been asked to speak at a few things lately, and I love doing that. I, as far as possible, I'll never say no. But it also got me thinking, in some of these scenarios, I'm like, I don't need to do it. Like, they're more than able. Like, they're more than equipped. And if they don't feel like they are, then I'm just gonna continue to breathe life into that place um, and, and just shepherd them and help them and teach them. And together, yeah, for men and women and teenagers to just say like, you guys are, you're more than able to lead in your spaces because we can't go where everyone here goes into their workplaces and their homes and their families. Yeah, as I think about that, that idea of making a lasting impact, you know, I hope that we've made an impact in our year here, but I think more about equipping everybody to make an impact in the space to which God has called them to do. I don't want to be comparative about like our first year here, our second year here, et cetera, but I might even be more excited for our second year because we've gotten a taste of God on the move. And I'm just so excited to see that continue to bloom and grow and people get rooted and grounded in him. So man, thank you for accepting us with such love and generosity and care. I hope you're excited for what God is doing in your life and in the life of our church. Man, following him is absolutely the best. So thank you for being on this journey with us. Awesome. Um, if you wouldn't mind, Buzz, putting you on the spot, would you mind, as we close this time, would you mind closing in prayer for us? And then we'll... Man, I would, I would love that. Uh, and so, Lord God, we, we just put ourselves into your hands. Uh, both Tara and I do that. Jared does that. Our whole church family, Lord, help us to do that, to see where your spirit is leading and to walk in it, to see where you're growing and harvesting in our lives and to come alongside that, to cultivate that. Lord, if there's something we've been praying for for a year, Lord, may we see an answer soon. If there's something that we are anticipating around the corner, Lord, would you bring an answer soon? And Lord, help us to not just only look forward, but help us to look back with gratitude and with thankfulness and with joy. Lord, you are so good to us, better than we could ever ask or imagine. Lord, we just pray you would increasingly do that. Your word tells us that you can do super abundantly more than we can ever ask or imagine. And so, Lord, as we greet this fall season and turn the calendar so quickly to 2024, Lord, do more than we could ever ask or imagine. Your grace never runs out. It never runs dry. Thank you for the privilege of serving in your kingdom. You're amazing. We love you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you, Buzz amen. and Tara, for um, sharing your hearts with us both last year and then getting to do this again today. So thank you guys so much. Um, we, guys hope, we hope you guys really enjoyed this. Um, please um, continue to pray for um, our church family, for Buzz and Tara, and as we move forward with everything. Um, but we're so grateful for you guys. Thank you for joining us today on Sabbath Sunday. We hope that you have enjoyed this, and we hope that you guys are seeking God on an even deeper level today. So we will see you again next week in person. Thank you. God bless.